Howdy folks, it's Will here from Flow Mountain Bike and welcome to this video review of the all new Pivot Trail 429. Yes indeedy, this is an all new third generation Trail 429. This is Pivot's go fast trail bike. So it sits between the Muck 4SL, the 100mm Travel XC race bike, and the Switchblade, the 142mm or mountain bike. The Trail 429 splits the difference with 120mm Travel out back and a 130 or 140mm Travel fork up front. Now that puts it into similar territory as the Santa Cruz Tallboy, the Ibis Ripley, the Norco Optic, and the Specialized Stump Jumper. As per usual, the full review of the Trail 429 is now live over at flowmountainbike.com. Click the link in the video description below and that will take you through to the full review of this bike right here. In this video, I'll be giving more of a broader overview of the Trail 429. I'll be going into some detail about what's changed on the new bike, then I'll be talking about how it rides on the trail, what this bike does well, what it struggles with, and ultimately what kind of rider it's best suited to. The latest Trail 429 gets a brand new carbon fibre frame with the vertical shock layout that we've seen on the Mach 4SL, the Switchblade, and the latest Mach 6. Pivot's built it around a trunnion mounted shock which actually squeezes the same stroke into a smaller package, and that's allowed the engineers to build a more space efficient frame design. There's more standover clearance, greater compatibility with long stroke dropper posts, and there's room for a large size water bottle on all frame sizes, including the extra small. The frame itself is still a carbon only affair. However, Pivot has employed more expensive, higher modulus carbon fibers to help reduce weight. Pivot claims the new Trail 429 frame comes in at just 2.7 kilos, including the rear shock. Joining the swing arm to the main frame is a DW Link suspension design. The two links are manufactured from Cold Forge 7000 series alloy, and they feature big pivot bolts and large diameter Enduro Max bearings. With the new frame, Pivot has updated the geometry on the Trail 429 with the changes you'd probably expect. The head angle is over a degree slacker at 66 degrees. The seat tube angle is a lick steeper at 75 degrees. But the biggest change on this bike is in the reach measurement. On the medium frame here, it's grown from 439 millimeters to 455 millimeters, essentially going up a whole size. The bottom bracket sits a little bit lower. There's a 33 millimeter BB drop and the rear center is being kept nice and short at 432 millimeters. The new Trail 429 does carry through the wheel size adaptability of the original model. So while complete bikes do come with 29 inch wheels, this bike will take 27.5 inch plus wheels. You can even set it up as a mullet bike with a 29 inch wheel on the front and a regular 27.5 inch wheel on the back. Adding further adjustability, Pivot has built in a two position geometry chip. The bikes will come shipped from the factory in the low position, but flipping that chip into the high position will lift the bottom bracket height by six millimeters and steepen the angles by half a degree. On top of that, Pivot will be offering the Trail 429 in a race build with a 130mm Travel Fox 34 fork and a float DPS shock, and enduro builds with a 140mm Travel Fox 36 fork and a float DPX2 shock. With the race and enduro builds, live valve and carbon wheel upgrade options, there's a total of 20 different spec options available in the Trail 429 range. Now pricing will start at $8,499 for the Race XT build and it will go up to $18,999 Australian dollars for the Team XX1 Axis Live build which comes with all of the batteries. The bike that I've been testing here is the Team XTR build. Retail price on this is $13,499 Australian dollars. For your money you're getting a Fox Factory Series fork and shock a Shimano XTR 1x12 drivetrain with carbon race face cranks, XTR 4 piston brakes with 180mm rotors front and rear, a Reynolds Black Label carbon wheel set, and 2.4 inch Maxxis Dissector XO tyres. 
Confirmed weight for our medium-sized test bike, set up tubeless and weighed without pedals, is just 12.4 kilos. Now at 175 centimeters tall, I've been riding a medium size in the Trail 429. It's worth noting though that the new bike is considerably longer than the old bike. That 455 millimeter reach is long for a medium and the seat tube angle, while it is steeper, it isn't as near vertical as what we've seen from some other trail bikes on the market. And that does mean that your weight is distributed quite evenly and comfortably across the cockpit. Though I will say for anyone who's normally used to upsizing to get a longer reach, take a very close look at the geometry chart because this bike is quite a bit longer than before. Thanks to the low slung top tube and the compact suspension design, Pivot has actually made the seat tube quite a bit shorter on the new Trail 429. So while our medium size comes with a 150mm travel Fox transfer dropper post, there's actually room for me to run a 175mm dropper if I wanted. Pivot takes care of the rest of the finishing kit on the Trail 429 with a 45mm long stem and 780mm wide riser bars. Overall, it gives a purposeful and efficient riding position like an XC bike, but with the broader footprint and stability of a longer travel trail bike. As with every other pivot we've tested, suspension setup on the Trail 429 is an absolute doddle thanks to that clip-on sag guide. For my 68 kilo riding weight, I put 160 PSI in the rear shock, and that got me to the blue line on the guide. Now, if you do want a slightly plusher setup, you can run more sag, just aim for the red line on the sag guide. Pivot has fitted the largest volume spacer inside the DPS shock, and that means the suspension is quite progressive out of the box. I got along with it just fine, but less aggressive riders and anyone who's struggling to reach full travel may want to downsize to a smaller volume spacer. Now, without doubt, one of the most impressive attributes of the Trail 429 is just how efficient it is to pedal. There is a little bit of shock movement initially, and when you're cruising along on the road, you'll be able to see that rocker link oscillating in rhythm with your weight shifts. The trunnion bearing mount, large volume air can, and progressive leverage rate means that initial sensitivity on this bike is absolutely fantastic. Now you can tune out some of that movement by using the blue compression switch on the rear shock. Flip that into the firm position, which isn't quite a full lockout, but it is suitably firm for riding on bitumen and smooth fire roads. The reality is though, that not a lot of energy is wasted when pedaling on this bike. There's quite a firm mid-stroke platform that engages around the sag point. As soon as you step on the pedals, the linkage tightens up under chain torque, propelling the whole bike forward with the kind of get up and go attitude that you'd expect from a race bike like the Mach 4 SL. Even with the shock set in the fully open position, this bike feels energetic and sprightly whenever you're on the gas. What's really impressive though, is the rougher and more technical the terrain, the better the pedaling performance gets. The DW-Link design is really impressive at separating pedaling inputs from what the rear shock is doing. The way that it keeps feedback to a minimum is dead brilliant, and it allows you not only to maintain, but actually build momentum when pedaling over rock gardens. Helping here is the Trail 429's relatively tall ride height. There's very little wallow from the rear suspension, and the bottom bracket also sits quite high to begin with. I measure the static BB height at 338 millimeters off the floor, which is a little bit higher than the Optic and the Ripley, and notably higher than the Tallboy and the Stump Jumper. This makes it very unlikely to stall on the crux moment of an awkward tech climb. Certainly on those 50-50 climbing sections, the efficient pedaling performance and the generous ground clearance meant that my chances of making a clean run were drastically improved. The impressive technical trail control extends to the descents. With that newly endowed front center, the Trail 429 has a really solid footprint on the trail, which promotes greater high speed stability than its predecessor. Despite the sub 13 kilo weight, it does take quite a lot to get knocked around while riding this bike. Bump control is fabulous given there's only 120 mil out back. And while it doesn't hover like the longer travel switchblade, it does absorb a wide range of hits both efficiently and effectively. The progressive suspension design gives a load of high speed control and it manages its travel really well. In fact, I'm still yet to bottom out the rear shock completely. Up front, the 34 is equally impressive, but having ridden the Grip 2 version of this fork, I must admit that I did miss that buttery plush performance here. The Grip 2 damper does offer more adjustability, better high speed poise, and it's more sensitive than the Fit 4 damper. However, it is more expensive, heavier, 
potentially harder to tune and it misses out on the lockout too. So I can see why Pivot has spec the Fit4 fork on the race build. And the reality is those who are chasing plusher performance for riding more technical terrain will naturally gravitate towards the Enduro build, which comes with that 36 grip 2 fork and the DPX2 shock. Despite the extra length and stability, the Trail 429 still has a lot of pop and playfulness about it. Thanks to the low weight and responsive carbon chassis, it's an easy bike to flick about on the trail. The predictable suspension behavior is also a significant contributing factor. Because the rear shock doesn't seem to get bogged down, it means that weight distribution on the front is more consistent. That said, you still have to ride the front wheel more assertively than the old bike, and after all, that added stability doesn't come for free. If you're feeling a bit tired or lazy and you're riding off the back of the bike, it's more likely to understeer and wash out on tighter corners. What helped here though was flipping the geometry chip into the high position. Now of course that lifts the bottom bracket to give you a little bit more ground clearance and it steepens the effective seat tube angle to 75.5 degrees and that improves the seated climbing position. More importantly though, it also steepens the head angle by half a degree and that naturally pushes more weight onto the grips and down into the front tyre. This setup allowed me to initiate turns more naturally, and it also allowed me to carve tighter and twisty trails more easily too. Helping here is the Trail 429 short rear centre length, which facilitates quick changes of direction. However, it's the stiff chassis and the stout back end that ensure the rear wheel doesn't wander offline through high speed berms. There's certainly a very strong connection between the handlebar and the rear wheel. I'll also say that the Maxxis dissectors are a great match for the Trail 429's handling. These tyres are faster rolling than a Minion DHF, but they're also more versatile and they offer more cornering grip than a Recon. They're certainly well suited to my local dusty, rocky, hard pack trails, though there is a slightly unnerving traction gap between the centre tread and the cornering blocks. Once you commit and lean the bike over, they do hook up nicely, and if you do push past the limits of surface grip, they engage in quite a nice controllable drift. As for the rest of the components on the Trail 429, it's all performed well and it's a very high quality package as you'd expect for the price. It hasn't been totally immune to issues though. We had some cable rattle from one of the entry ports of the head tube which needed some electrical tape to snug it down. And of course Shimano's finned brake pads make the usual rattle. I'd recommend replacing those with non-fin brake pads once the originals wear out. Otherwise, the four-piston XTR brakes are fantastic with huge controllable power, and the shift quality has been rock solid throughout testing as well. The Raceface carbon crank set is quite light, and they look lovely too, and they're paired to a custom enduro bottom bracket which has deeper insertion cups and double row enduro max bearings. There's lots of other nice details on this bike too, like the 3D chainstay protector, and the option to fit Pivot's tool dock system. I also really like Pivot's lock-on grips which have a nice tacky compound and a tapered profile which gets thicker to the outer end of the bar. And I also dig Fox's dropper lever which has a nice machined alloy paddle which sits a little bit further off the grips making it an easier and cleaner target to hit. And lastly, I will say that the Reynolds wheels are absolutely superb. These are quite light, they came in at just 1540 grams on our scales, and with their low profile asymmetric carbon rims, bladed spokes, and that buzzy Industry 9 free hub, they provide excellent acceleration with a nice and whippy but well-tuned ride quality that suits the Trail 429 well. And that, my friends, brings us to the verdict of the new Pivot Trail 429. I will say that this isn't just the best looking iteration yet, it's also the best performing trail bike to have ever worn the Pivot Cycle's name. By reworking the shock layout, Pivot's engineers haven't just improved the overall packaging of this frame, they've also improved the dynamic performance on the trail. It offers more stability and rough terrain control over the previous bike, though it maintains agility thanks to the responsive carbon frame and that short and stout back end. Add in the adjustable geometry, the wheel size adaptability, and the impeccable pedaling performance, and there are no doubts this is one of the most versatile and well-balanced trail bikes currently on the market. Now, if you'd like to read the full review of the new Pivot Trail 429, make sure you click that link in the video description below to take you through to the full review over at flowmountainbike.com. If you've got any questions for me about the Trail 429, make sure you drop those into the comments below, and make sure you give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Otherwise, that's it from me, guys, and I'll see you next time. Tooroo!